Hi, I'm Stephen Feinberg, Executive Director of the Rhode Island Film and Television Office. Our guests tonight, and I say guests, are Nicholas Delmenico and Anthony Ambrosino. They're filmmakers, producers, extraordinaire, and they're both from Coventry, Rhode Island, and they have a company called Ambrosino Delmenico, and I welcome you gentlemen. Thank you for having to us. double feature. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Good to have you here. Now, I remember you guys starting out as production assistants on shows like Body of Proof and uh, uh, Waterfront, and now you're producing and making movies. Feels good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so your most recent production is um, Painless, right? Yes, sir. Now, you guys just came back. I know you did some traveling. You made the film, and you're getting all of these accolades. Tell us about... Uh, this new film, Painless, and the accolades you just received. Sure, it's a Painless is a science-based drama. Uh, we just uh, world premiered out in Cinequest in Cal San Jose, California, and we were extremely fortunate to get the uh, New Vision Award um, with uh, director uh, Jordan Horowitz. Bravo. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that's a feature film. It's a feature film. Yep. And, uh, and then also, didn't you uh, also get selected in Phoenix as yeah. well? Yep, uh, from San Jose, we're going to go to Phoenix, and then we have submissions into some other festivals, and we're working our way east, yep. and uh, we'll see where we end up. Well, we really hope that it's going to be part of the Rhode Island International Film Festival. Us too. Be nice to, <laughs> to show the film. And, and what's, that, what's that story about? It's about a guy who, who, who does not have any pain. He's got some rare disease. Yeah, it's based on a, a real-life condition. And, really? Uh, the, the character in the story is fictional, um, but it's about a man who can't feel physical pain. He has trouble differentiating between hot and cold, and it's kind of the struggles he goes through. And that's kind of the, the story on the surface of the film, where it's, it's this hard science, it's this real, you know, real story. But uh, ultimately, the film, where it connects with the audiences, it's about loneliness, kind of some alienation, and fitting in, and uh, ultimately accepting yourself. And that's where, you know, most people kind of... Finding your way in the world, mm -hmm. so to speak. That sounds really cool. Um, now, you guys started, what, in 2005, you started to collaborate together? Mm -hmm. um, what was the first production? What, 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 how did that all happen? How did you guys get together? I don't know. One day, Anthony said to me, hey, you want to write a script? And I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's the way it starts. <laughs> and then a few years later, we were sitting at the VMA in front of 1,800 people, uh, premiering Slether yeah. at the Rhode Island International Film Festival. And that was probably... Despite everything we've done since, the highlight of our career was sitting in your hometown in a packed theater with something that you worked really hard and on. And that was a comedy, right? That was a comedy, yeah. And I remember um, when I came back uh, to Rhode Island in, in 2004, and I remember, like, you were working on Slether. It took, you were doing it in pieces. Yeah. But that's cool. I mean, you were doing it on weekends, and you're getting it mm -hmm. together, and you ended up, how long was that film at the end of the day? 90 minutes or yeah. so? Yeah, 93. You had a feature film because you stuck with it. You stayed on the horse. Yes. That's awesome. And then you also worked on, a, a, is it a sci-fi horror movie, Almost Human? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a film uh, we produced a few years ago. It premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival, and that was uh, like a lightning in a bottle, as we call it, where it caught fire, got picked up by IFC Midnight. They released it theatrically, Blu-ray, DVD, all that. That was a big deal. Yeah. Now, that was with Joe Begos, right? He's, yeah. a, he's a Rhode Island guy. Yeah, Coventry as well. Coventry mm -hmm. as well. And what was the story about um, uh, Almost Human? That was yeah. a, wasn't it a god, was it oh, yeah. an alien? Uh, well, he, it, you know, it, it's basically a, a guy is abducted by aliens uh, and comes back years later to the town as a missing person who shows up and goes on a slashing rampage. Uh, aliens have taken over his body and, and he... So a Disney film. It. Absolutely. <laughs> Good for the kids. Good for the kids. So, so while you're doing all this stuff, um, you also are um, running the... Uh, producing the the Providence 48 hour film festival mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit too because that's a, a an achievement in itself well that all came about through the Rhode Island Film Collaborative so when we first started doing this Facebook wasn't really a thing yet and uh, you know you feel like you're the only person making movies so we uh, met a gentleman named Mark Fogarty and uh, in a bar in Providence, and we would sit around once a month, and, and everyone would commiserate on how hard it was to make their movie and what they needed, and we started sharing assets and, and uh, crew and, and, and helping community each other building, out. And community really building, community building. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few years later, we made it a nonprofit, and, and it's been ever since. And, you know, all these projects we talk about in the success of Slather and Almost Human and Painless and things couldn't have happened without the local community. Yeah. And, uh, 
through the collaborative and you know the film office and all these other entities that come together to make Rhode Island film what it is, uh, it's really something special and I think unique we have here in the state. Yeah, I agree. And then and then you get at this 48-hour film festival, teams get together. I couldn't believe how many teams did you have this past year? We had this year we had 48 teams. 48 teams. I, I was like, my mouth was like dropped to see all these people and you were giving them where they were going or what what genre they were filming you have 48 hours to 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 uh, follow the concept write the script make the movie edit the movie and and deliver it on time to the festival for a screening for a panel of judges it's insanity mm -hmm. it's yeah. insanity <laughs> but you guys have done that you've done the 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 collaborative and you also run the Pawtucket Film Festival as well mm -hmm. Now, what, tell me about the Pawtucket Film Festival, why that's special. That's a, a great event. It was started by Rick Roth, uh, who's uh, got a company, Mirror Image, in, in Pawtucket. And he found this uh, small theater at the Blackstone Valley Visitor Center and said, what's, what's being done here? And the answer was, nothing, really. Uh, so he said, let's you know, make a film festival. And it's annually been a part of the Pawtucket Arts Festival. Wow, that's great. Oh, you know, there's another film, too, I want to talk about that you guys produce called Seeds. Yes, sir. With Owen Long. Well, tell us about Seeds. The Shining meets Lolita. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's in post-production right now. That was shot in Jamestown. Um, and uh, it's a, a, you know, a dark, like, psychological thriller. Um, yeah. And we're, uh, we are really excited to see how that uh, comes, plays with the yeah. audience. And yeah. then also, I have to tell you, one of the funniest things I've ever seen uh, was Nobel Prize, this short film that I believe you're just finishing up. Yeah. And you showed me a rough cut, and I couldn't stop laughing. And then the next day, as I was driving to work, I was just laughing again because I had seen it the night before. And when I got to the office, I had to put it on again. And that was a testimony to your word. I thought it was so funny. Um, what, where, what's happening with that now? So uh, Nobel Prize was uh, written by Guy Benoit. And really, the project was spurred as a film collaborative had a Women in Film Summit. And so a lot of things that happened at that summit were statistics about female presence in the industry, and one of them was that uh, around 30% of uh, actors are, are female in films. And we were challenged, kind of, what can we do on our next projects to do something about that and, and to you know balance things out. So I went to some of the best writers I know, and I said, I want a short film under 10 minutes to direct, and I said, it has to have a female lead, and it, I, no sex, no violence. And uh, he sent me Nobel Prize, and I thought it was amazing. And I, I love said, I'm it. it. I love it. I love it. I love <laughs> it. I can't wait. Um, any advice for any uh, local filmmakers uh, that you know that you guys want to share? Oh uh, yeah. Wisdom? Something that we kind of touched on earlier is about like you know sitting around in the bar or, or whatever or wherever you go now. It's Facebook, but meeting people and talking to people and getting involved in as many projects as you can, mm -hmm. and just getting building your network. Yeah, and you've been developing the friendships. And what, what, what project do you want to do next? Anything that's uh, coming up that you want to do? Um, there's a, the lead actor of Slather, Michael Cicero. Um, talk about making your own career. He, we had a conversation about gigs and getting the next part, and I, I talked to him about writing his own screenplay. And he, the last couple years, he's worked and wrote his own screenplay. We've come on, and it's a great script called Respite Road. And we've just packaged it, and we're sending it out now to raise funds and bring it to Rhode Island and, and shoot. And that's a, that's a great super. testament Can't to wait. That. Respite Road. Respite Can't Road, wait to yeah. see it. Well, guys, I want to thank you so much for all you've done. It's been wonderful watching you climb that ladder. And uh, now to be, you're, you're doing phenomenally well. And I'm very, very proud and happy that you're here um, on Double Feature. And I look forward to seeing more of your work. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Steve.